In this example, we want to examine the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 of secant theta. Well, secant theta is 1 over cosine theta, so we know we're in a bit of hot water here because if we just plug in pi over 2 for cosine theta, right, that should be 1 over 0. Uh, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, which gives us something odd. It's either going to be positive infinity, negative infinity, or does not exist depending upon what happens to these one-sided limits as we approach pi over 2 from the left and from the right. So do you know that cosine of pi over 2 equals 0? That should be immediate recall. If it's not, may, do something with your trig to make sure you have that immediately available and you don't have to do a bunch of thinking, you don't have to pull out a calculator. This should jump out immediately. If not, review that trig, memorize some more stuff, but it shouldn't be something you have to do a deep search for. Okay, let's check out these one-sided limits. Let's start by approaching pi over 2 from the positive direction, which is from the right of secant, which is 1 over cosine again. So let's look at what happens. We have 1 over cosine, so we know we're going off to some kind of infinity, we just need to figure out if it's plus infinity or minus infinity. There's a few ways to do this. You can also use the quadrants. I think what I'm going to do here is use the graph of cosine. Right? The graph of cosine and sine is another thing you should have readily available uh, by memory. Right? You don't want to have to think too much about this. Right? This should just be something that pops right out. If it's not, go back and review the graphs of sine, cosine, tangent, Make sure they're imprinted in your in your RAM, your mental RAM, so you can instantly bring them up and you don't have to do some deep search or go through a bunch of mental manipulations. It should just be right on the surface. Okay, as we approach pi over 2 from the positive direction, which is from the right, right, we're coming from the positive direction, so it's what, what direction we're coming from. Um, notice that cosine is negative, right? So 1 over cosine is all going to be negative, so this is going to shoot us off to negative infinity. Negative infinity. Right there. Okay. Let's see what happens as we approach from the negative direction here. So now we're coming in from the, the negative direction, which is from the left, and we come in here towards pi over 2 from the left. Well now, note up here, as we, we're approaching from the left, cos theta is positive. Okay, so this is going to be positive infinity. Now, you may be saying, well, it's positive right here, but way over here it's back negative again. Well, we're only really interested in what happens right around pi over 2. So just pick a region where things are pretty consistent. You might have to go really small if, if things are really bumpy, but just get really in small close to your point of interest until you can just get a good idea of what's happening in close to it, and you don't have to worry about what happens out in the extremities here. Well, folks, we have two different infinities here, negative and positive. Remember that the limit at a point A exists if and only if the one-sided limits um, as you approach A from the positive direction and A from the negative direction are equal. Well, here they're not equal, thus we can conclude that the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 does not exist. Does not exist. Which we often abbreviate as DNE. DNE. Another way to approach this that's interesting is instead of using the graph, choose quadrants. And remember this all students take calculus. So as we approach from the, the positive direction, right, we're coming in this way, actually, then only sine is positive, so cosine is negative, and as, as we approach from the negative direction, all are positive, so cosine is positive. You can get the same result using that method as well.